These are some disclosures. So PET-MRI is a hybrid, fully integrated imaging modality which provides simultaneous anatomical and functional information. The PET detectors are, reside here in the 3T MR gantry, and today we have approximately 110 installed um, throughout the world, 23% in North America and 54% in Europe. The advantages of PET-MRI over PET-CT is it's significantly less radiation dose, so 80% reduction. Um, you really are only getting the tracer dose only. You don't get the CT dose. Superior soft tissue contrast, so you can pick up additional diagnoses on the MRI, and a single visit completion of workup, which is uh, extremely useful. It also improves diagnostic accuracy and can change management in 12 to 35% of cases. So we primarily use PET MRI in neuroimaging for seizures, dementia, and oncology. So let's start with seizures. Um, the diagnosis is typically clinical, an EEG is typically done, and then usually the neurologist will order an MRI with seizure protocol, and we like to encourage quantitative volumetric imaging at that same time, and also ideally FDG PET. Hopefully I can convince you why the PET is so important. So 10% of people will experience at least one seizure, 50 million people worldwide have epilepsy, and 2% of the U.S. population has epilepsy, and this is a really debilitating disease. You know, you lose your driver's license, you have anxiety about a head injury, if you fall, you're always wondering when the next seizure will occur, and so it's a big health problem. Now, a cortical lesion anywhere in the brain can result in a seizure, but the temporal lobe is most common. And 25% of epilepsy patients uh, are refractory to medical management. So mesiotemporal sclerosis is the most common cause of medically refractory um, temporal lobe epilepsy, and the treatment is typically surgical. So neuroradiologists play a key role in identifying that seizure focus. So this was a patient with recurrent seizures since childhood, and you have to look very closely um, in, in all seizure cases when you, you are interpreting structural imaging. But you see here that the signal intensity in the white matter in the right temporal lobe is just not quite as low as it should be, and it's asymmetric to the contralateral side. So here's the T2, here's the flare, and with the PET-MR fusion, we see that there is reduction in metabolism throughout that right temporal lobe. Here's a nine-year-old boy with nocturnal seizures, and you see this very subtle cortical irregularity, blurring of the gray-white junction along the medial aspect of the right uh, superior frontal sulcus, and on the flare, you see very subtle flare hyperintensity there. So this 